Welcome to the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. It's December 8th, 2021. Reminder that we adhere to the Jenkins Code of Conduct. Be nice to each other. Um, so topics that I had on the agenda today, a status report on JEP 234 that was re reviewed last week, just briefly, status report on Jenkins 2.319.1, and then I think we want the bulk of the time to be focused on UI improvements that are in progress or discussion and uh, next meeting date because there is a, a holiday collision here for many of us if we meet at our usual two weeks from now. Uh, other topics that you'd like to put on the agenda? Yes, maybe a small topic. <clears throat> um, I've created a new a UI plugin it's uh, the prism plugin it's about source code highlighting i'm using it locally in the one plugin and now i created it as a plugin so everybody else can use it as well we use Great. it in, we use it in configuration as code ah okay so you say you're you okay so so that feels like a great topic um Let's let's put you on the list, Uli. Any other topics we need to add? Okay, then let's go through the topics. So JEP 234 has been merged into a Jenkins Weekly. It's not going to be in Jenkins LTS until the next LTS baseline is selected. And Jenkins 2.319.1 LTS has released. Thanks very much, Tim. And uh, no major issues reported in my monitoring of the, the list. Has anybody else seen major issues that, that um, they need to report here or concerns related to that, that LTS release? Great, okay. Next topic then, Uli, you are the PRISM plugin. So do you want to share your screen to show it or? Um, yeah, maybe that's a good idea. <laughs> the best thing let me share my screen so um as you already know uh, in the warnings plugin you can see the number of warnings in a project and you have the possibility to navigate to the source code that means uh, you can click for one here on the warnings and then you see the source code view where you have our source code and yeah, the warning here itself. Um, this view is using Prism as a JavaScripting framework as background. That means the highlighting that this is a Java file and we have syntax highlighting. You see we have the braces matching. These things are provided by Prism. Prism is uh, this thing here. It's a website which provides this JavaScripting library. I'm using this library, I think, for two years now, locally in the warnings plugin. And yeah, what I did not yet manage is was to provide it as a single plugin. So what I started now is to extract the JavaScripting code into our own plugin, so everybody else can use it in their plugins as well. So currently. Uh, the state is that we have the JavaScripting and CSS files in, in this plugin. It's is already working. So the current release of the warnings plugin has it as a dependency already. Uh, what I'm wanted to add is that we have some, yeah, some simple building blocks to show a source code in Jenkins. So I want to have a few model in Java so you can just say new source code view and give it a file name and then you see everything in one single view this is not yet ready this is all currently still in the warnings plugin and i'm refactoring that part of the code so we can use it in other plugins as well so conceptually we could we could create something for instance like a declarative pipeline syntax definition for use with prism and it would syntax highlight is that or or in this case the java code or if it were javascript i were seeing i assume they've already got visualizations for those they've already got um highlighters for those they have uh, 
thousands, uh, no, not thousands, but 100 <laughs> of uh, different uh, programming languages supported. I'm not sure if they support uh, our special Jenkins files. Uh, I don't know, but I think a lot of languages are already supported. And uh, what I added now is some kind of um, automatic uh, downloading the correct uh, syntax highlighting language. So in your file, you need to specify I'm using JavaScript and then the JavaScripting uh, library is loaded uh, on demand. So you don't need to load everything in one row. You just need to download one language that you need. So actually, I, I haven't looked into detail how many languages are supported. So I, in the warnings plugin, I need support for C and C++ and C Sharp and JavaScript, and that's working quite well. And yeah, I think my next plan is to use it in the code coverage plugin as well. So we have some kind of highlighting. And I think there are a lot of other possibilities. Maybe in our workspace navigation, we also have the, or if the Git plugin would show some differences, it would be helpful if we can see it with syntax highlighting. Elegant. So, so Tim, you had mentioned that you were already using this in configuration as code. Are you bundling it likewise then? So if it becomes an API plugin, you'd need to change that to depend on the API plugin or? Um, so we just have the assets just hard coded, just copied from a version a long time ago. It was added and was added three years ago and hasn't been touched. Okay. Okay. And that's for YAML syntax highlighting, highlighting, I assume. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So, so that's Uli, you'll... one sixteen zero. And so then Uli, think... you'll oh, go ahead, Tim. Excuse my interrupting. I was just going to say it's that, and then a <clears throat> minor changes on top of it. I'm not sure if we've changed some stuff or not. I don't know. But yeah, we could possibly we could probably move to it. Be good, good to get have it updated to get new things. But it works really well. I mean, YAML is quite simple in this respect. We're not we're not doing anything fancy in YAML. Yeah, that was the same in the warnings plugin. I think I installed the version two years ago and never touched it, and it just works. So, but I had a pull request uh, last week when someone added um, highlighting of uh, these columns here. Uh, then I thought it makes sense to yeah add some more details and ex in, in, use some more plugins and and the idea is what I want to add is that we have uh, some generic concept of adding such blocks as well. So if someone wants to highlight some source parts, it should be easy possible after that. So this is not yet working in the API plugin. It's still in the warnings plugin. But my idea would be to add it to this API plugin as well. And having as it as an API plugin makes updating much easier. So I can use Dependabot to update now the JavaScripting code and the CSS code. So it's much easier now. Excellent. Yeah. So this 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 looks brilliant. It's that really good looking. Yeah, and they also have a lot of themes. And one of my plans is to make it uh, customizable as well, so that a user can select his theme. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if it makes sense uh, to select the theme on this page, or if we should use it on the uh, profile of a user. I'm not sure what makes sense. I think they have already, I think, six, six or seven provided themes and it should be easy to toggle them uh, on the row uh, during viewing one of these files. Yeah, it may possibly fit into a theme manager plugin as yeah. well. Or maybe that yeah, would be an idea as well, because maybe if you're looking with a dark theme, it makes sense to, to choose, choose a different theme. Yeah, I have a, a default theme for that sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the, the configuration is code has just got one built in. It's like, um, 
it's quite a, it's quite a dark one. Mm-hmm. It looks quite nice, but it, look, it looks a little. It looks a bit out of place on a light theme. I'm just checking on it. it. Looks like a dark theme. Yeah, it's quite nice on dark theme, but not sure how well it is on a light theme. And now, the the API creating an API plugin that provides JavaScript APIs is no more daunting than creating an existing API, a, a Java based API plugin. That that was a piece. Are you already using API plugins for some JavaScript components? I think you are, right? Yeah. All of these uh, are using the same te- technique now, and it's really simple. Uh, I think it's uh, it's yeah not simpler as Java. It's it's almost the same. You just uh, use some kind of thing like the POM XML, you, you have some package specification and then you n- need to know how to build it. And I know it now. <laughs> Felix did a lot of good work for this Bootstrap plugin as well. So I'm using the same approach now for all these plugins and that's really comfortable because uh, they are well, they get a lot of more releases than Java APIs normally. And then I just can use dependent port to update it and to release a new version. And it works really out of the box, quite simple. Thank you. Thanks very much, Uli. This looks great. Okay. Then we can move ahead. All right. So next topic was on UI improvements and with Jen not here, maybe Tim, do you want to give us some hints of how how you see things evolving? Anything that we need to be more involved in to assist more that kind of thing? Right now, it's mostly just fixing test failures. Um, that's what I've been trying to get sorted. Um, this tends to be quite difficult. Um, the Jenkins form tree suffers very fragile and you can very easily break it um so currently the on the main um form improvements pr which is what i've been focusing on there's one test failure for reverse build trigger um where i think where the data bind is not quite working there um i've been kind of i've fixed quite a few others and generally just have to bisect the whole pull request um, un- undoing changes until you find what broke it and then it's not yeah it's quite a pain um, I kind of hacked it on the um, uh, those section headers on the job page to get that working but the test passes now um, and then there's ATH as well and uli has got a few um, comments though generally I think think they probably need to be fixed and some plugins maybe probably post merge um, or possibly fix them beforehand if we get it to a good state um, and then need to look at the ATH uh, I don't think ATH will be fi- fixing in plugins, um, the uh, plugins well, oh. I don't think there's anything broken in plugins it's just things misaligned or um, g- generally things misaligned um, I think ATH is more it's like possibly things not scrolling properly, not scroll to the right spot. I haven't really looked at it too much. I might have time to look tonight. Um, apart from that, the other PRs, buttons one is genu- in a fairly good place, um, but I think there's still some ATH issues. I think the general build is, I think all the test failures have been fixed on the button one. Um, a few questions on advanced button and how that should look. Um, but I don't think it's a blocker. The plugin manager, I think it's in a good spot, but early had a whole bunch of feedback for more improvements, which Jan wanted to um, find time to work on. I think he's got a different branch where he was doing some stuff, but uh, I don't think there's anything ready, but he resolved the conflicts on it, on the plugin manager today. We could ship that one. I don't think there's anything, well, after checking BOM and um, ATH, which I don't think we've done on those, we could ship this one and do another iteration to address early feedback, or we could just hold it back. Um, it looks quite nice. I'm not sure if anyone's got any thoughts on that. So, so 
we've already had, so this is to apply, or maybe, maybe would you be willing to show the plugin manager as it exists, or is it is it workable for you to show it as it exists? I've seen the changes to the tables and think they're, they're lovely, they're really beautiful, and, and haven't experimented yet with the plugin manager. I'm just saying if the screenshots are up to date. Oh, oh, right, right. I could just open the, the pull request, couldn't I? Because yeah, it's, it's, even if they're even if they're out of date, they're probably closer than than anything else. Yeah. Let me get that. So just a moment. Yeah, they're probably a bit out of date, but they're generally right. Okay, so I see. Uh, I've put it in the chat. It's not five nine oh, six. Thank you. Okay, I was searching and okay so here is the the pull request and looking at the screenshots so it's going the the before is the upper upper image and the after is the lower yeah when everything goes capitals it's the new one oh right right exactly okay so it's like yeah, yeah like the updates tab moves the version that it's going to update to next to the text um and then in the installed tab they change from check boxes to toggle switches for enable and disable which is kind of a bit nicer right. and um and the downgrade buttons are different but different it's that middle thing oh I think. oh yes okay i like that all right so so here the downgrade button is on the bouncy castle api example right where in order to downgrade it shows i pick that and it's showing me the version number for the downgrade yeah and then the installed version is moved into next to the text as well rather than taking up a whole column right so i think earlier I had some suggestions around things like yeah uh, but this was Dates some uh, additional things. <laughs> so I think the pull request is really awesome. It's really nice. Uh, I already like it. And I added some additional comments which are not caused by the pull request. These are some general things that we can improve even more if we would like. But this needs not to be done in this pull request. Just okay. some ideas. So maybe we just check that ATH and um, bomb are passing, and then if they're fine, we can probably ship this. Um, okay. Be good just to get one of these out because there's quite a few. Um, but the the biggest impact and the general the main one is the modernized form one, which fixes some of the issues from the last one um, and makes everything look quite a lot nicer. And the form modernization one, that that one is still still in work, and that's the one that I think you were describing earlier in this section. Did I understand correctly? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's it's ho hopefully quite close. It's, it's, but you just never know with ATH. Yeah. Right. Okay. Great. Excellent. So, so the thought was this one, the plugin manager improvements may be near the point of merging so that we could get it into a weekly while we can, while the work continues on, on the, the larger form modernization. Yeah. 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 That, that really is, that is, is very attractive. Yeah, right. I think there's a couple of other ones as well. There's they don't have PRs open. There's one that adjusts the um, validation um, to be a bit, bit nicer. So it fixes the bug um, where the validation is touching the input field, basically. But it also reworks it um, and just yeah makes it look a bit nicer. Um, there's no PR for that. I'm not sure if he's still working on it or if he just doesn't want to open anymore at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah, there's a job config one that people have seen, um, which needs the full modernization in first. Um, but that fixes the screen width for those with bigger screens is that um, you don't have that bar around it, which means that you're not taking up that full area. Mm. Okay, but that one, that one you say needs the form modernization first, so it needs the larger one first before 
Yeah, there's a, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff in that one. Um, mm. And then there's some stuff in the buttons one that the form one is just one kind of needs where you've got that um, like delete branch thing that if you pull in the buttons PR, then, then that's actually just a, a little button, a little round button. Um, okay. Yeah, I think that's generally it. Excellent. Thank you. Any any other items that you wanted to highlight, uh, Tim, in terms of, of UI or UX topics? No, I haven't really had a lot of time. Um, I've, in the time I've had, I've tried to pack away those unit test failures, basically. And, and thank you so much for doing that. So then, then that covers all the topics. The next question would be, when should we meet next? The calendar would indicate uh, usually we would have met two weeks from now on the 22nd of December. That may actually, be in holiday season for many people. What, what works for the two of you? Actually, we move the calendar for every four weeks. We have. Yeah, sorry. The, the reason I said two, it, it, two weeks from now would be on the four week cycle again. Ah, okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. Your point is valid. Absolutely. I should have been more, I should have been more clear. Um, right now, it's not on the calendar for the 22nd, so the next date would be the 19th of January. Is mm -hmm. that too far out? Should we set one for like the 5th of January? For me, it would be fine if we take the 19th, because in, over the holiday season, uh, two weeks, I'm not here and I don't have much time. So it would be fine if we have in four weeks. If that's fine for everybody. Yeah, it's probably fine. I just don't know how much time I'll have for it. I might I might have a fair bit of time. I might not. Don't don't know yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've got the next uh next Elso 2.319. to further support January 19, 2.319.2 releases um the 12th of January. So making it the twenty, the nineteenth feels good to me. Let's take it. All right, great. That covered everything I had. Anything else anyone else needs to discuss? Not for me. Okay, I'll post a recording uh, later. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> yeah.